happy. She's happy. The web's like tickling me. What's going on guys? So it all started on Instagram with this video I posted showing how cool the web is of the golden orb weaver. It's one of the biggest spiders in Australia and I've always been so impressed by them because we see them everywhere. So anyway, my awesome friend Kate commented on the video and actually contacted another awesome girl for me who is an expert on spiderweb. Her name is Genevieve and she's completing an honours degree so she is a spider silk researcher from the University of the Sunshine Coast. I asked her if it's cool if she'd like to be in one of my videos and she said she'd love to. So off we went into the rainforest to find out more about the golden orb weavers and their incredibly strong webs. Wow, Dad, this is insane. No, 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 you, like, this will be... Yeah, that's a really good photo here. <laughs> that is remarkable. Wow. Like, the coloration in those legs I haven't seen before, but the abdomen is still really small, so it might just be like a large, a really large juvenile. That is, that is crazy. Yeah, and so powerful red. It seems to have a smaller one here too, because that's another golden orb. Oh yeah, that's not the main. Oh, same species though. Same yeah. species. But see, that's the juvenile normal colour. Mm -hmm. And it seems slightly yellow, but see how it's got the yellow bits there? Yeah. So that's, so that's normal. like That's the a normal size. That's an abnormal size. <laughs> Like freaky. Very that, awesome. Man, that yeah, you need to get some shots of this. Yeah. Day. Like that is insane. Yeah, so beautiful. Look at <laughs> I can't get enough of how like red that is. Yeah. No, usually they're about a quarter of the size of that at that colour. It's beautiful. So it's a very special moment that we get to see this one. It's almost the exact same size of my hand. Yeah. But spread out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that one would probably be the size of your hand spread out. Well, I think that one's about the same size. But just like thicker in the legs because that yeah. one's like a adult oh. versus juvenile. <sighs> Does that look good, Dan? Do mm -hmm. so you need me to stand behind it? Because if it's like camouflaging... Yeah, if you take a, a step to your left... So you'll be able to put your foot into there. So this silk here is called the drag line silk. That's the strongest silk that the spider actually produces. It produces sticky web, produces strong web, and it produces a few others in between just to hold the whole web together. But these ones here are what people basically describe as stronger than steel which isn't actually stronger than steel, it's tougher, which is strength and elasticity combined. So how does it produce like different silk at different times? Spiders actually have four different glands on their abdomen, which are called spinnerets, and they basically spin water, which has protein in it, really, really fast, and then they pull it out at the exact speed that they want, and it turns into this. So it's water and protein. And the different types of silk are based on different types of protein that are in the water. And the spider knows how to somehow pull out the exact right proteins at the exact right speed. If anything's slightly out, it doesn't work. Yeah. Because scientists have tried pulling it out faster, slower, and it changes it. So with the tougher web and then the silkier web, is that different amounts of protein and water? Is there like more protein in the stronger web and like less water in the silky web or in a way yes but it's actually just different proteins oh yeah. so it's a different combination of proteins which make up the sticky silk and different combination to make up the strong silk and yeah somehow she just knows exactly what to do okay. the really cool thing is if she hasn't got food for a while or she's just really hungry but hasn't caught anything she can actually eat her web and because the web's basically protein, she consumes the web and she gets that little bit of protein back into her, which gives her that energy that she needs to survive. Just in case like she isn't getting all the insects that she needs or anything. Yeah, exactly. It's awesome. Like now in summer, often we have those trees and everything falling down. Completely wrecks their webs all the time, so they don't get enough web to basically catch all their food. So they end up eating their web every single day pretty much. 
and reproducing it so that they can hopefully catch those few insects. It's great. A really awesome find for our first golden orb encounter of the day, but we're actually tracking down the dark colour form of this species. And I really wanted to know so much more about Genevieve's years of research on this particular spider. So it worked out really well to be studying spiders and to have the exact spider you want outside your door. Mm. So, is there any like, particular reason that you're interested in this, the um, pillipes? That's right, pillipes? Yeah, the pillipes. Uh, species rather than the other one? Um, through previous research we found that golden orbs in general produce mm -hmm. spider silk that is tougher than any other spiders. Mm -hmm. So we just went with, well, what's known, we'll just run with it. Mm -hmm. And then we found that the Australian golden orb, these giant ones, hadn't actually been studied. Wow. And we thought, well, a big spider would probably produce stronger silk because it's got to hold its weight. Mm. So we went with that idea and we decided to test it. Yep. And in fact, the larger spiders did oh, produce. Look at this guy. Oh, that's cool. Dad, look at this. Such a good photo. And the tree. That is awesome. Get that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, Seeing big lizards like this is real common on bushwalks. We got some sick shots of this sweet little water dragon, which is actually pretty rare because they're so fast. We ventured deeper into the forest and I got to chat more with Genevieve about her knowledge of spiders and just her love for wildlife in general. And being able to listen and learn from someone who studies spiders for a living was just so inspiring for me. Along the way, we even saw a few layers from some different species. This forest area is known for tarantulas and trapdoors, but we're still waiting to come across the black orb weaver. I was really excited to see how tough that web was. As we got closer to the waterfall, Genevieve spotted some golden web on the other side of the creek. She's got such a great eye when it comes to finding golden orb weavers. I guess when you study them every day of your life, you know what to look for. She obviously had a good feed because her abdomen is quite large. Yeah. And she's still a smaller one, but it's just very cool seeing different colours. And she doesn't seem aggressive because she keeps running from her web. So, yeah. Did you have a container on you? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, we can give it a go. Are you going to go under or over? I'll go under because her web's unprotected from underneath. Um, maybe just close it in like that. This is it. Once she's in there, you just break off all the sticky she stuff. She seems quite chill, hey? Yeah, this one's very placid. Man, we finally got one! The exact golden orb weaver we were searching for, a Nephila pillipes. The darkest orb weaver there is. So out of all the research that Genevieve has done, she says this is the species that has the toughest silk of all. She's making any points to hang on to. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. You could collect it all, maybe take out the males. Sort of is females. that the male? Is that there? Uh, yes, that's the male. So that's the normal size of a male. Ooh. Very Ooh. small. And um, yeah, you can collect all that and then show it on your hand. Even if you just stick your hand onto the sticky part. All right, guys. So if I wind all that up, look how yellow that web is. Man, this is awesome. We'll go take a better look at this. It'll be good. And now we just had to find a nice spot to get right up close to the golden orb weaver, check out the silk, and do a quick little interview. And just so you guys know, Genevieve is highly experienced in handling spiders, and she fully understands all aspects of their behaviour. And she can almost sense what they're going to do. Also, she's fearless as and a total badass. Oh my goodness. So here we go. So 
as you can see, I'm not making movements to get her to come onto me. I'm always just letting her crawl mm. so that she can crawl onto me. Yeah. yeah. How did you, you know, start really getting into orb weavers and learning to love them? It was actually through university. So I was doing my undergrad degree in biomedical science. Yep. And a project came up about spiders and looking into how tough their silk was. Yep. And I've always been interested in spiders. Mm -hmm. See how she's standing like this? Mm -hmm. This just means she's ready for anything. So she's seen something, possibly a insect pass by, and she's like, oh, I would like to eat that. And now she's realised it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I decided to have a look into the project and thought it was interesting and went along and yeah, the project's been really good in that we've looked into how tough the silk is and found out that these golden orbs actually produce the toughest spider silk in Australia mm. and have remarkable features that no other spider has, which has been amazing to see. If you could like explain how tough the silk actually is, like some people say it's stronger yeah. than steel, like There's a little bit here. Yes. And this oh, is yeah. obviously about a hundred strands mixed together, so they're quite fine usually. Mm -hmm. And if you pull that, it slowly breaks like that. Yeah. So it's combination of strength and elasticity. So how much force can be applied to it before it actually snaps like that is better or tougher than any man-made material. So, for example, if you were to shoot a bullet into a cloth that's made of spider silk it will stop the bullet but if you shot the bullet into a cloth that was made of very thin steel the bullet would go straight through mm. so that's how we determine how strong it is yeah so it's not like or if you bend spider web it's the equivalent of bending steel or anything it's like no no it's, it's a little bit different it's more like as tough as steel. Yeah. In the way. Yeah. Tougher than steel. Yes. Tough's the better way. Yeah. So when you finally completed, you know, seeing how tough the web is, what was like the, the next step from that one? Next step is looking into producing it synthetically. So like a polyester fibre, but so that you can mass produce it. Yeah. Because if you can mass produce a fibre that is tougher than any man-made material on earth then you pretty much change the way we live today. Mm. Like, imagine having clothing that would never wear out or um, synthetic implants for sick people that would never degrade so it would last forever. Possibilities are massive, but we do have to find a way to produce it synthetically. So it can literally change lives. Yeah, it really studying can. Spider web. Yeah. So did you try to study the molecules of the web? Yeah. Like... yeah, I had a look into it. To be honest, I love the outdoors collecting the spider webs better. Yeah. Rather than being in the lab testing the molecular structure of the silk. Yeah. But we did get to have a bit of a look at it in that we basically did lots and lots of scientific tests on it mm -hmm. and figured out the proteins, the exact proteins that the spiders use to produce the silk. And by understanding that, basically the further steps are then combining a way of pulling the silk like the spiders do, and also combining the proteins to make the silk. Yeah, as you said, like pulling out the web from the spider's abdomen is different from it actually doing it itself. Yeah. Like it uses, like it makes different styles of web than the ones it actually uses? And yeah, well, if you blow a bubble too hard, it just pops. Mm. And if you blow it too slowly, it doesn't really make a bubble. But if you blow it just right, it makes a perfect bubble. Yeah, and that's how they do it. They do it just right. Yep. And if you pull it too quick or too slow, it changes it and it doesn't make a decent web. Mm. So it's very hard for the actual scientists to pull it properly so it's yeah. better off just they do it yeah exactly that's why we'd come out into the bush and go find them in their natural habitat mm. it's also more fun <laughs> all right guys so i'm actually 
gonna try and give this girl a handle. See how it goes. See how she's more relaxed. Yeah. That's okay. Oh. <laughs> you can put your hand down there and just let it climb onto you. Nicely done. Oh my goodness. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, the the little like hooks in her legs are um you just got the web there. Why? Quite sharp actually, but you know, don't really feel anything. Yeah. Getting good, good shots. Yeah. That's really good. She's happy. She's happy. The web's like tickling me. She's always got the web carrying behind her, as you can feel. Yeah, the, she's just dragging the web along my fingers. <laughs> the abdomen is so beautifully designed. It's quite different from that one, like how it's quite tan. This one's like jet black. There we go. There we go. Oh, okay, you've got the web attached to your hand. Yeah. Nice. I did it. Well done. So that's the first time I've actually handled an orb weaver. So I was a bit freaked out, but I thought it was really fun and awesome because the only spider that I've handled that size was like a huntsman, but oh wow, I did it. There we go. Thanks so much, Genevieve, for you know helping me to be confident enough to handle the orb weaver and you know, coming out here with us and finding the orb weaver is so cool. No problem, you did a great job. Now, do you wanna go release them? Yeah, let's go. All right. you guys for watching and subscribing and I personally want to give a huge thanks to Genevieve Kerr. You really helped make this episode awesome and also gave me that confidence to handle the orb weaver. And I'll catch you in the next one guys. This spear with which I will impale my dinner. And I couldn't come a moment too soon because I have been without food for a good three hours or so, starting to feel it a little bit.